of the defined infrastructure. So let go with me and maybe in 10 minutes you will know a bit more and be able to understand more what I mean with all of that. So let me first introduce myself. So my name is Bruno Konek. I'm working for HP. I'm part of a solution center based in uh, EMEA in Grenoble in France. Uh, where we are doing uh, customer workshop, proof of concept. I'm involved in open source and Linux since quite a, a certain amount of years now and doing OpenStack related stuff as part of it, uh, being an Helion MVP and uh, making my first ironic contribution two weeks ago. So I'm a newcomer in the ATC camp uh, in the OpenStack world. Uh, so I want to talk to you about some information about containment of resources first. Uh, there are three ways, in fact, to contain resources in the Linux environment. Uh, you have the possibility to use bare metal systems, and on top of those bare metal systems, to use technologies such as C groups, namespacing, NUMA, uh, in order to constrain the resource usage of your application. Uh, another way to constrain uh, the stuff is to use a containment possibility, which has been brought into Linux recently in the last past years, uh, with technologies such as LXC or Docker and you have an isolation of application in a very specific environment, but they all share the same kernel, and so that's the specificity of this environment that we call OS virtualization. And the last, and what you probably know if you're following OpenStack closely, is using KVM as an hypervisor and having a full isolation with hardware uh, emulation, different operating system, application-based, on top of those operating systems that you can use. And so you have a very good uh, isolation at a price of an increase of complexity and a uh, number of components in, in the stack that you have. So if we map that to how OpenStack is trying to uh, control those different way of managing resources, uh, on the right hand side, you have the Nova uh, control, you have the Nova controller which is able to manage virtual machines and give you the full control of those virtual machines. You have the new project called Magnum which is, does exactly the same with regards to containers uh, in an OpenStack environment. And when you want to deal with bare metal, you have Ironic which is uh, the brick which has been developed to control bare metal deployment and provisioning. And that's where we will look at more closely because that's uh, where there is some innovation we can put in place to improve the way Ironic is dealing with uh, managing resources in its environment. So what is really Ironic? Uh, I hope you attended uh, Devin and Devon Devin's presentation uh, during this OpenStack Summit. If you don't, there is a, a URL on the slide and you can click and review the presentation he made to explain to you what Ironic is, and you can have access to his slide set and, and the source code, of course. So Ironic is really the bare metal deployment project as part of OpenStack. Uh, it's usable either standalone or as a Nova driver. Um, and for the type of work we are doing, the fact that the standalone version has been made available, uh, lastly in Kilo, is very important for us because it will allow us uh, more ease of use when we will do testing of uh, the new infrastructure uh, that we want to, to support with regards to Ironic. So it provides a common API across hardware vendors uh, to control physical and virtual resources. Uh, it's really a, a, a single place and depending on the hardware platform that you have, you will be able to pilot them to have access to the virtual device, for example, that the different hardware manufacturer are providing through a single API and single way of managing it through Ironic. And the way it's working, it uses drivers to abstract the different way of interacting with the hardware platform, which makes it a very uh, compelling solution to do uh, bare metal deployment. So now, what is Redfish? So uh, you, you, you may think that Redfish is what, what I have in the back of my, of my shirt, which is uh, sort of some uh, very nice uh, fish in itself. And, but it's more what you have on, on the slide, in fact. It's a, a small fish. Uh, it has started as an effort of standardization between different companies, um, Dell, Emerson, HP, Intel, group themselves to try to really uh, replace IPMI, which was becoming uh, old and did not provide all the features that we want and that we expect from modern hardware. So it started as a, as a standardization effort between different companies and has been taken over by the DMTF recently uh, and will become a real DMTF standard in the coming weeks now. Um, they have published a certain number of uh, intermediate versions to help you uh, explore the technology, understand how it's working. So they have published the REST full API specification proposals. They have published some JSON and XML format, and also a certain number of mockups 
uh, to help you if you don't have access to hardware providing you a Redfish interface. You have a software emulation that will give you the possibility to interact with a Redfish-based hardware without any Redfish-based hardware, which is great. Or you can just buy uh, an HP server, which will make my company happy and uh, will ensure my salary at the end of the month. Um, so wh what it does is really to replace IPMI to provide you much more features uh, to do hardware configuration from a RESTful-based API. So imagine that you can send an order to your server on the managed bond board and say, okay, I want to get the uh, size of your hard drive, the uh, memory size that you have. I want to configure your remote card uh, management board so that uh, you can do authentication. I want to reset the power. I want to do all those type of stuff uh, and much more through the RESTful API. So this is really the way we will manage platform in the future. It's a software <coughs> defined approach of compute management, which is really uh, introduced now with, with Redfish. So why does it happen? It's because there were a certain number of issues with the previous existing um, software method to, to control a hardware platform. Uh, first one, and, and very important in these days, is the security related aspect. Uh, it's using HTTPS, RESTful API, a certain number of known components that people have been using and that are secure by nature, much more than what you had with uh, TFTP boot environment uh, or uh, IPMI communication between client and server up to now. So this is really uh, focusing on adapting the same technology as the rest of the OpenStack projects. Uh, it has a much better understanding of the hardware than you used to have before. So it, it understands the notion of blades, the chassis, the blade system, the multi-node cartridges, such as we have in our uh, HP Moonshot platform, for example, uh, on one single physical server, you may have multiple processors and if I have multiple servers that you want to address separately and configure separately. All that is not possible very easily today with the current infrastructure and, and Redfish is aiming at solving those problems. Uh, it also supports um, manufacturer extensions. So if you are a hardware manufacturer and you want to add features to Redfish which are not yet part of the standard to make them look by the DMTF and maybe become part of the standard. Uh, you have the possibility to have a private zone in the Redfish specification, very much like the SNMP uh, MIB was, was giving you the possibility to, to do. And you can add your own information in, the, in that zone, query it and add extension to tools so that you are providing a better management interface to your, to your users. And the, the best of all of that is that it's really a standard across manufacturers. So it will provide a standard approach, standard API to manage all type of machine systems from a single pane and whatever the hardware manufacturer is providing, they will respect a certain number of uh, information they need to provide to be Redfish compliant. So why do you want to combine Ironic and, and Redfish? It's very uh, uh, important for us because the DMTF should publish the final specification of Redfish, so the, the one zero version around June 2015, uh, which and, and the, the adoption of Redfish will, as a consequence, uh, uh, really increase. It's already provided as part of uh, most of the existing uh, ma major ma hardware server manufacturer uh, currently. So. Uh, if I take the case of HP, I know, I know the best. Uh, all our new J9 server are providing a Redfish interface, so uh, our customers are already today able to use that interface. So as much as they are using these servers to deploy their new cloud infrastructure, we want to give them the possibility to have a richer interface to control the hardware platform that they have. Um, Currently, they can use a, a driver such as the ILO driver, for example, uh, but they, they, will be, they will get much more feature if they use a Redfish interface in the future. So what we want to do is benefit from uh, the Redfish existing features, such as the virtual media, power management, PXE boot environment, uh, and add it to Ironic as a new driver inside Ironic to be able to control those type of platforms. Uh, and hopefully it will become the future standard way of using uh, controlling hardware platforms through Ironic. Uh, and in the future, we will add new features as part of the Redfish environments. So for example, getting rid of the PXE boot environment, which is uh, not 
really secure, not really uh, scalable, and using instead the uh, HTTP boot environment that we want to push inside the, the standard in future revision is something we, we, we aim to do and will bring much more flexibility into uh, the deployment method for, for hardware platforms. Um, so how do you want to combine those two bricks together? Uh, so first we need to develop a Python Redfish module, uh, which will allow us to provide um, all the useful uh, feature of Redfish available through that Python model to consumers of the infrastructure. So we will use the DMTF mockups to test all the feature and to automate all the testing. So everybody can work on that and add new features as part of the Python module uh, to, to make it available. It will be really uh, easy to, to develop even without any hardware platform. Uh, Ironic has already a certain number of drivers for uh, management boards that are on servers, such as ILO, IPMI, or other manufacturers' components. So we want to create a Redfish driver alongside those existing drivers and base the development of that Redfish driver on the Python Redfish module so that we can make it easy to uh, add that feature into Ironic. And what we want to do is to, do, to, to, to make that available, we want to create a test environment based on Docker. So we already have the Docker container for the Redfish mockups so that we can uh, make requests to it as if it were a real server. Now we're working on the mockup on the uh, container for hosting a standalone Ironic environment and using those two components, everybody will be able very easily to deploy those containers on the system and participate to the project and make improvements into the environment. So we hope to have a, a certain number of discussion during this design summit about that approach. And also an ultimate goal we have in our uh, solution center is to add through an in inventory mechanism, if possible, uh, the possibility to interact at the Redfish level, so using the Redfish brick through Ironic to interact with a CMDB. An example is a, an open source CMDB such as ITOP. Uh, that is also REST-based API, and we can interact between those components to completely automate the management of our uh, infrastructure in our solution center, and so really provides the notion of uh, software-defined infrastructure that we aim at uh, targeting. So that's what I had for you today. Uh, feel free to contact us and, and reach us on uh, GitHub. Look at the software, contribute, and enjoy. Thank you very much.